It is time for the ornament project. When I did the globe project this past summer, I used an 80 triangle sphere. I knew that it was possible to make a simpler 20 triangle sphere. In the 20 triangle sphere, all of the triangles are the same and all of the angles are the same. The idea being that I would make the 20 sided sphere then would turn that sphere into the Christmas ornament. So the first task was to figure out what each triangle would be. I had remembered the ornament I had done a few years ago where I made a six-sided snowflake on each end of a cylinder and made sort of a, a two-sided sphere. The first thing I was thinking about was that and that I could make some kind of snowflake pattern, but... <laughs> Triangles have three sides, which works with six sides, but the way this sphere goes together, the triangles are in groups of five, so it gives you a five-sided shape. So I was having trouble making a snowflake pattern work, and I started thinking about making the triangles out of squares, so it would be sort of like a, a pixelated thing, and I started to draw something like a Christmas tree, and then it became clear that the triangular shape of the Christmas tree would work nicely with the triangular shapes on the sides of the sphere. So I came up with a graphic Christmas tree that would work within the triangles of the sphere. And I mapped that onto the sphere to see what that would look like. And it looked like it would work. The thought was that I could build the background pattern and then decorate each tree slightly differently. The first thing that I did was to make a new jig to hold these triangles on the table saw. And this is the only thing I'm doing on the CNC machine. So once I'm done with this, we won't see the CNC anymore. <laughs> I have a equilateral triangle jig that I used for the globe, but because this would have a different angle on the sides and the table saw would be set at a different angle, I thought it'd be nice to just make a new jig. So I cut sort of a, a top and bottom plate for the jig. The bottom plate will ride on the table saw and the upper plate will hold the triangle in place. Then I made a piece that will fit within the table saw track. And I've done all this before, so it went quickly and I sort of know what works as far as making this track piece. I can put a screw into each end of the piece that fits in the track and this will help adjust the width of the ends of this stick so it will slide perfectly in the track. I also modeled one of the triangles with the angles on the sides. The big thing that I screwed up in making the globe this past summer is I, I didn't do those angles right. So I spent the time to really figure that out and it's 20.9 degrees, which means I set the table saw at 69.1 degrees. And that should be the angle between the triangles within the 20-sided object. <laughs> I can attach the two plates of the jig together and add the clamp. This clamp will hold the triangle in place while it's been cut. I made a prototype sphere before I started making the complicated fussy Christmas tree ornament sphere. <laughs> so I just made this out of triangles I cut on the CNC machine and put it together with the jig and the angle and everything seemed to go together and everything seemed to be working. So at this point I could start making the Christmas trees. And the idea I had was to make a length of glued up material that would sort of reveal the Christmas tree pattern when it's sliced into sections. I was calling it the sausage because it's kind of like a sausage that you slice into little pieces. I suppose it's a little bit like a sushi roll where you make some sort of pattern with the filling of the sushi and then you, you slice it into sections and you get that pattern on the ends. So I got a leftover piece of maple 
that's left over from the tree I had delivered a few years ago. And the walnut is just a piece of walnut I got. I figured for some nice contrast, I'd do the, the tree in light maple and the sort of the field for the tree would be walnut. So the, the sphere is walnut with maple trees on it. <laughs> so I cut the wood into pieces that were slightly bigger than half an inch. And I could start to cut the angles for the Christmas trees. When I was sketching out the graphic, my angles for the sides of the Christmas tree were really close to 45 degrees. So I decided to just make those angles 45 degrees, as this would mean I wouldn't have to worry about which way was up or down on those pieces. If you flip the piece over, it's still 45 degrees. So th this made it a little bit easier, as I didn't have to keep track of quite as much. <laughs> It was just a matter of cutting four strips for the Christmas tree. Each strip is a slightly different width. And then I'll stack those on top of each other to make the Christmas tree graphic. Now I can cut the walnut field that'll go around the maple Christmas tree. And it's just a matter of cutting pieces that'll fit into the 45 degree angle. I can set up my glue tote that I did in the last project because <laughs> I'm going to need it now. And I've found this is actually really useful, having all the gluing things together in one place. So I can glue each strip of maple and walnut together. And this will make each layer of the final sausage piece or the final sushi. <laughs> Clamping the 45 degree angle wasn't too difficult. What I did is I used the wide part of these clamps to sort of hold the joint vertically. Then I can use smaller clamps to pull the two or the three sides together. These bigger clamps will keep that joint from coming apart. As the, the force from the clamps is all at 45 degrees to the seam. You can see that I have clamps vertically and clamps horizontally. I got the four sections for the tree glued up and realized I needed more walnut, mostly for the, the very top piece and the base or sort of the ground below the tree. And I wanted to make a trunk. I found a piece of walnut that was a little bit more sapwood than the other walnut. So I was hoping it would be a little lighter and it would show up as a trunk under the tree. You can see it, but it's really subtle. <laughs> so this is the widest piece at the bottom of the triangle. You can see how all of the slabs go together. So once these were glued, I then rejointed each face as they weren't perfectly flush. And this is why I left them just a little bit thicker than I needed. So I would have a little bit to remove to make everything flat or flush. Then it's just a matter of gluing everything together. I did it one seam at a time, letting things set up for 15 or 20 minutes and then coming back and doing the next seam. And this is the final two pieces going together. So each time I'm gluing two sections together, I'm making sure that seam is completely tight and perfect. Now everything's done. I can take all the clamps off. I jointed the bottom. This was one of the little bit hairy parts on this project. I wanted to cut the 60 degree angle into the side of this piece. And I thought it'd be a little safer if I didn't cut off everything on the table saw. I just kind of trimmed up the side enough that I get that 60 degree angle into my length of wood. Then I could sneak up on the final dimensions with the joiner. And I can put the cross cutting blade in. And now I can cut the pieces of sushi. 
So I cut the end off to see what the inside looked like. And it looked like everything was nice and tight, at least at this location. <laughs> and I set up a stop block. I decided from my prototype that I didn't really need as much thickness as I thought I was going to. So I made these an inch minus the eighth of an inch width of the saw blade. So about 0.9 inches. Really, I just need enough so I can make that sphere without getting into the middle on the lathe. So I ended up with some extra of my glue up. I'm wondering if maybe I should make a 20-sided version that I don't turn. <laughs> but I haven't gotten to that yet. In decorating the trees, I wanted to just simply drill holes into the triangles and add dowels on the trees, sort of like Christmas ornaments. And I had a hard time finding dowels in colorful woods. So I, I found cherry and walnut and maple and, and sort of the sanded stuff, but I couldn't find paduke and purple heart and yellow heart and sort of the more colorful woods. And I, I'm sure they exist. So I did a quick search. I knew I'd seen videos on how to make your own dowels. So I, I found one idea was to drill a hole through a piece of steel at the size of the dowel that you want. And you, you leave the, the hole in the steel a little messy and that burr on the hole that you've drilled will then cut a dowel if you drill a similarly sized piece of wood through that hole. So I cut up some paduke and some purple heart into strips that were ever so slightly bigger than the hole and I put a slight point on one end and rounded the other end so it would fit in the drill a little better and pushed that through the hole I had drilled. And while the burr was sharp, this worked pretty well. So I did the paduke first and I tried it horizontally and that worked, but the work table kept trying to roll away. So I ended up putting the piece of steel in horizontally and pushing the wood down vertically. And this worked a lot better. When I got to the purple heart, I think everything was dull and it, my purple heart broke. <laughs> so I got two shortish pieces of paduke made this way. So it works, but it's not a method that you can really make a, a lot of dowel material out of. I suppose if I drilled a hole through tool steel, something much harder that would stay sharp, it would work better. I used an old jig to hold the triangles on the drill press so I can drill the holes in the triangles. I had been thinking more about different kinds of wood and different sizes of dowels and I just kind of make random patterns in each of the trees. Like we were at a Christmas tree fair and you're just looking at every different kind of Christmas tree. It was at this point I had the idea that I didn't follow through on. <laughs> so I should have made each of the decorations on each of the 20 triangles a different frame in a little stop motion of the ornaments going on the trees. Maybe that'll be for a future sphere. I cut up a piece of holly that I had, thinking I would make dowels out of this, and it worked, but it kind of chewed up the holly. I managed to get one short peg on one of the trees. Then I had the idea I could cut up colored pencils as they're round and use those as some of the ornaments on the Christmas trees. I can now technically say that I have wood turned colored pencils. So I guess I'm trendy now. <laughs> I also figured out I could cut dowels on the bandsaw much easier and much quicker. <laughs> so I, I, I switched to doing that. As I had 20 Christmas trees to decorate, some of them had more dowels in them than others. As all of the Christmas ornaments dried, I could think about how they were going to be cut on the table saw. And when I had made the prototype, I had just used my regular throat plate in the table saw, which worked, but some of the offcut pieces got stuck in the space between the throat plate and the blade. 
most of them were fine, but a few of them would get stuck and I would have to stop everything and, and clean out the space next to the blade. And it was a little bit sketchy doing it this way. So for the final triangles, I made a new throw plate that I can cut the 69.1 degree angle into. This throw plate kind of goes with this jig now, but it means that the offcut pieces don't fall down next to the blade. I can sand all of the triangles once they're dry. And you can see the different designs here. What was a little bit different about these triangles is I hadn't cut them on the CNC machine. So they were very close to equilateral triangles, but not quite. And this worried me a little bit, but I think the jig kind of fixes that problem. I found if I started with the piece on the triangle that's the ground, so the piece with the trunk in it, that seemed to fit into the jig nicely. And if I cut that side first, that cut off the error. And then the other two sides seemed to fit into the jig perfectly. I could kind of fix the little bit of unequalness of the triangles with the jig. Then I could start putting the triangles together and they seem to work. You can tell pretty quickly if they're not going together, if the angles aren't right. And I sort of just taped everything into a sphere without any glue, just to see if it would work. And it seemed to be good. And I pulled everything apart. When I made the prototype, I did it similarly, but I pulled the sort of top five triangles off and did those first. I think I was still thinking a little bit like the globe project where I had 80 triangles to do. Then I did the rest of the sphere as one piece and then put that five-sided piece in the top. And this worked, but I think the, the first piece I did had started to set up so it didn't really move when it went into the top. So the joints were pretty good, but there were definitely some places where it would have been nice if I could have pushed everything together a little better. So on the final piece, I figured out how to unwrap the entire object and lay it flat and have all the joints laid out. Then I tried to quickly go through and put glue on everything all at once and then sort of roll the whole object up into a sphere. And this seemed to work better. And I also had the rubber bands at this point. So I think those helped a lot too, just to kind of squeeze everything together. I think that the tape kind of holds it together, but the rubber bands really give everything a little pressure. So now that the glue has set up, I can take everything off. Now I also learned on the prototype that the best way to hold this on the lathe is to start with the centers instead of the cups. But to do that, I need two of the points to be flat and a very small, very shallow hole for the points on the centers to fit into. I also sanded off the other points a little bit quickly on the disc sander, so I wouldn't have to do them on the lathe. Then it was just a matter of turning. So I've done a whole bunch of spheres. I'll link to the sort of first main one that I did. This one was a little different in that it was geometrically balanced. So I could turn the speed up pretty fast, but it was still pretty bumpy. So it started out a little chattery. Once I got into the volume of the sphere, it got a lot smoother. The other sort of conflict or trade-off in this method is that when you make the length of glue up, the, the sort of sausage, as I've been calling it, you have lots of freedom in what pattern and what designs you can make in doing it that way. Instead of doing it as a, as a side-grained project, doing it as an end-grained project. But what that means is that the sphere that you make is all end-grain. 
So turning it is doable, but it's slow and you have to keep the tool just absolutely as sharp as possible. I was sharpening pretty much between every rotation of the sphere. So after the first turning and getting it close to a sphere, I can put the cups on. The drive cup I like to true up every time I use it. It sits for a little while in between projects and it's nice to get it perfectly round every time. So this was a pretty solid day of very carefully taking off just a little tiny bit, all with sheer cuts with the bowl gouge, with it, the gouge as sharp as I could possibly keep it, trying to get to a sphere, getting closer and closer and closer. It was very slow. It wasn't hard, it was just very time consuming. I was having a little bit of a dilemma where I could see that one side needed material removed, but when I'd put the sphere in the cups, that side was always further away from the tool rest, meaning that wasn't where the material was being removed from. <laughs> and I couldn't wrap my head around where I should take off material to start to move the center of the sphere into a location that would allow me to remove material where it clearly needed to be removed. It's like I still had flat spots on some of the Christmas trees, but those weren't the Christmas trees that were closer to the tool rest. So I had to just sort of keep turning and turning and hope I would get there. I did eventually, but it'd be nice to know how to steer where the center of the sphere is as you're taking off minute amounts from different sides of the sphere. Also, I found the seams were nice and tight, but I think there were places where I didn't quite get glue onto every surface. So I was getting a little bit of chip out between some of the triangles. I think the joint was tight. It was just there wasn't any glue in that location. So the, the wood would sort of come apart at that spot. Also, it was pretty clear in one of the seams, I managed to get a piece of tape in the glue joint. Like somehow it must have flipped down into the glue. I didn't notice it. So there's a piece of tape inside one of the joints. <laughs> and this is towards the end where it's getting very close to a sphere and very round. So it's smooth and nice to turn, but I'm still only taking off just the smallest amount. I managed to get it to a sphere and something I was happy with and I could sand. And I finished the piece with Yorkshire Grit, which both does the last step of polishing and puts a beeswax mineral oil finish on. So the shine is really from the smoothness of the wood, not from the finish. I think in the past I've always worried about how I'm actually going to hang it on the tree. And I think maybe I'm finally just over that and I'll just make a sphere and call it a Christmas ornament. <laughs> and it came out really nice. Merry Christmas. Thanks for watching.